Welcome guys. Um, I've seen a few people commenting saying that they're struggling to control large quantities of ships. So although this isn't particularly large quantities compared to uh, what it can get up to, 20 ships is still quite a considerable amount. So I'm just going to show you one easy way which is kind of like not brilliant but probably better than what you might already be doing. So it doesn't require much um, micromanagement. So it's like an easy way to start but it's not the best way to play. But it's a nice starting place. So what you're going to want to do is put all of your ships of the same class into a division. So all the torpedo boats, all the light cruisers, all the armoured cruisers, all the battleships. Now, you're only going to control the battleships. Right, before you continue, you're going to want to take the avoid ships off on all the divisions. So you can just press 3 to take it off. Okay, so, like I say, you're only going to be controlling the biggest class of ships. So, we'll just see the enemy are to the north, so we'll just head them in that direction. Now, what you're going to want to do, with all the other classes of ship, just press screen, so just right click onto the division that you're controlling, the battleships. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is reduce the speed of these screening ships because you don't want them all milling around and colliding everywhere. So, one thing you can do with the um, slower ships is reduce them so they're into a cruising speed area which will give them an accuracy bonus. So, cruising speed is just at the top of the F on full. So it's not there where you think it would be, because that's where this line is. But it's actually just here at the top of the F on full. Now you also get the cruising bonus down to where the bottom of the H is on half, which is there. So anywhere between there and there is fine. But what you want is for your screening ships to be slightly slower than the ships that you're using. So again, just drop it to just below where the line is, just uh, at the top of the F on full. And then with the torpedo boats, the really fast ones, you can either drop them down to the top of the half, or the bottom of the half, sorry, so they're approximately the same speed as the ship you're using. Um, or you can just leave them at full and have them flying around all over the place. It's, it's up to you. But I prefer to keep everything at about the same speed. And either just the same speed or slightly slower than the, uh, the ships that you're actually controlling. Now one thing you can do is with one of these torpedo boats doesn't have to be a torpedo boat, can be anything but uh, with one ship that's faster than your uh, main battle line that you're controlling just detach them and use them as a scout so we're going to choose this guy probably so you, are, you can either hit a pro apostrophe tr twice if I can say it properly apostrophe twice or that and then that. Okay, so you can use him to, to scout for the enemy, put his speed back up to full, and then all you're going to be doing is scouting with one ship and controlling your battle line. All of your other ships will um, basically, it kind of acts as like an AI mode but an AI mode where the ships are going to hang around the ships that you're actually controlling. So, because we detached him, his avoid ships came on again. 
So once you detach any ships, you do need to press this avoid ships. So it looks like the enemy have spotted me. Now I haven't used any... Um, I haven't designed any of these ships. So my, my ships and the enemy ships are all just uh, AI designed ships. Okay, so all we're going to do is just sail um, perpendicular to the enemy and then just let our screening ships do what they want to do. So we don't particularly need this uh, scouting ship anymore because we've already found the enemy. But you can use him to fire his torpedoes if you want. So it's a good place to start. Um, having one battle line and one screening ship just to get you in the mode of being able to control a battle line and another ship at the same time so you'll be constantly switching between the two the one that you're controlling and the battle line so it looks like shells were coming in that direction So, this isn't the perfect way to play the game, um, but it is the easiest way to play the game. So, if you're just starting out and you're struggling uh, to control everything, everything's getting a bit too much for you, you can use this tactic, or strategy, whatever you want to call it, this technique, to get to grips with the game and gradually branch out into more um, technical ways of playing the game. So what I would recommend as you start to improve your skill is to start detaching these so they're all individual ships. So what you would have is if we just click on it and then press apostrophe twice all of the ships would be individual that's the ideal way to play with screening ships because then you can quickly if a ship looks like it's doing something that you're not happy with you can quickly select him and because we've selected an individual ship we can control him if he was in a battle group then if you try and control an ind individual ship in a battle group as you can see we're not controlling him because he's not the lead ship so he might be the one that's in trouble, you drag and select, but you can't move him, because all you're doing is moving the lead ship as you're clicking around. So having battle groups is not ideal for if you want to quickly control an individual ship, which is why as you start to improve your skill, break up all the screening ships into individuals. So. Once you've managed to get get the hang of now breaking up all your, in, your screening ships into individuals, the next thing I suggest is breaking up your battle line into individuals as well, and having them on a follow order instead of a battle line. Now the reason is, is because you have full control over a follow line, where in a battle line, the AI takes partial control. So, say for example, this ship gets damaged, he might retreat, but he might retreat that way to the back of the pile. And you don't want him to retreat that way um, because he's getting in the way of your ships, he might be getting in the way of torpedoes, he might be heading in towards a big clump of enemy ships. So, you would have wanted him to go that way where in a follow line you have full control over breaking them off when they're damaged. Also, if a torpedo boat, for example, comes in here in this direction and he looks like he's about to torpedo him, if we're in a battle line, we can't select him 
and move him out of the battle line. You can't move him out. So you would then have to select him, detach him, and then you can't reattach him in the position he's in. He'll now reattach at the back and it becomes a mess. So if you have a follow line, which is exactly the same function as a battle line, just with individual ships. You can manually move every individual ship. So if one ship looks like it's not doing what you want it to do, or if one ship looks like it's under threat with torpedoes and you want to do some tor torpedo avoidance, you can. Or if one ship's getting damaged and you want to move him out of the line, you can just simply move him, select the one behind, and then join him onto the front, so now he's out of the line. So, this is how I recommend learning the game. First of all, start off with groups of each individual, each individual class. Then gradually start splitting ships up into um, individual ships so you have full control over each one. Okay, so we are in 1890 at the moment. So everything's going slow and it, you have a lot of time to react, um, which is great, obviously. Just uh, set all these back to screen. Also, if you've got a follow line instead of a battle line for your main division that you control it, you can set your ships to screen either the front of the battle line or the back of the battle line. Where if it's just a division of a battle line, not a follow line, so if it's got multiple ships, it will only screen the front ship. You can't screen the back ship or a middle ship, it'll only screen the front ship. So there might be occasions where you want to screen the back ship because you want to keep your screening ships as far away from the combat as possible. So that's another reason why uh, a follow line is better than a battle line. Okay, so like I was saying, um, in 1890 everything's a lot slower, you have a lot more time to react, it's a lot easier to, to learn, to practice. But you can use this technique in any um, era. So if we just leave the battle, let's choose 1930. Or, why not go up to 1940? Right, so I'll just clear this. Oh no, I do actually need a ship, don't I? <clears throat> you need, unfortunately, once they're clicked on and taken out of the AI, uh, you do actually need to design it to be able to start. So I'm just clearing all the ships so they're freshly auto-designed.
Okay, so we're going to want to put all of our battleships, all of our battle cruisers, all of our armored cruisers, all of our light cruisers, all of our destroyers, all in um, their own divisions. Then we just tell everybody to screen the one that you're using. Then you're going to want to drop them down to about anywhere between 20 and 28 knots so you can do each one individually if you want like I did in the first demonstration okay so the battle cruisers are just over what the battleships are. You want them to be just below. Okay, so, like I said before, um, take everyone's avoid ships off so they don't interfere with each other's movements. Now, when you've got long range torpedoes, you might want to turn your torpedoes off so you don't get any friendly fire results, or you might just want to play a bit risky, leave them on, or if you put them on save, that's a bit less risky. And then again, if you want, you can take one of these destroyers out and use it as a scout. So we'll just press apostrophe twice, now use him as a scout, take his avoid ships off. And then you're just using your battle line and your scout. That's all you need to worry about. So we can put his speed back up to full. Because he's the scout. then all you do is just control your battleships. Everyone else will follow along. Because they're at a slower speed than you, they're not going to overtake you, get in the way, do any barging around. They'll just behave like a bit of a ball. As the enemy get close to you, they will break off and try to engage the enemy. But that's not necessarily a bad thing because they will screen your battleships, the ones that you're controlling. So now with your scout you can either go in for a torpedo run or you can just do a full rudder turn and use him just to act as like a bit of a decoy. Uh, a full rudder turn the enemy have a huge penalty when aiming at you so if we have a look oh, he's out of range unfortunately try this one he's got target maneuver 93 minus 93 percent on the target maneuver so by putting him in a full rudder to him, you're basically making it really difficult for them to kill you so that's a good thing to do with the scout so what I quite like to do is see what my range of the torpedo is, get within that range, fire your torpedo off, this is with your scout. Then as soon as your torpedo is fired, let's have a look see how many I've got, 3 times 5 so 15. So let's see if we can fire off all of these torpedoes. Once they're all fired off just put them into a rudder turn quickly have a check on our battle line so we're sailing perpendicular still so like I say this is a, a nice easy way to be able to control a large fleet 
by only really controlling one ship, basically. So it looks like this ship's not going to make it, so we'll just put him in a full rudder to it. And then as you improve, you can start breaking up all your ships into individual ships so you've got more control. So that's pretty much it really. Obviously you can see as you're getting closer to the enemy, some of your ships do branch out and try to actually screen your battle line. And uh, it's not such a bad thing because they do act as like a decoy. It's obviously not perfect because with them moving about so much, uh, you might not have the best firing arcs, the best accuracy in general, because they've constantly moving around. But it's a lot simpler than micromanaging everything. So another thing that you can do is obviously use each individual um, task fleet itself. So you can control this task fleet, you can control this task fleet, and you can control this task fleet, and you can control this one. So that's another thing you can do if you wanted. So now you, you're controlling four different task fleets. So it's a, a little bit more challenging, but you do have more control over doing that. Um, because obviously your ships aren't going to be snaking around all over the place. You can still leave one of your classes of ship on screen if you want. Um, typically you'll leave your smallest class on screen. Uh, because obviously they're the ones who are going to be the hardest to hit for the enemy. So if they do get close to the enemy, um, they're not going to just die immediately. And then, like I say, as you improve, you can start controlling individual ships. So let's say, for example, we take this out, take his avoid off, and then send him into a torpedo run. And then once he's fired off all of his torpedoes, then put him in a rudder turn to act as a decoy. He's still alive, so he's done quite well. And then as I said before, um, when you start getting experienced in using all of these techniques, you can now break up your battle line into individual ships as well. So there you go, they're the methods that I, I recommend using when you're not quite so experienced and you just want a nice easy time. Just set everybody in their own division of ship class tell them to screen the ships that you're actually controlling but make sure that you set their speed uh, below what your um, battle line speed is preferably uh, 